Today we're going to be talking about how to improve on keyboard and mouse. I get asked a lot for this video, so we're going to be going over everything today, all the way from settings to best practices. Timestamps are down below if you want to skip around. But before we hop into it, I want to give a quick shout out to Gamersleeve. This fits perfectly into the topic of how to improve on keyboard and mouse. From day one of when I switched to keyboard and mouse from controller, I always wanted to get a sleeve that would drag across my keyboard nicely. I never liked wearing normal long sleeves shirts because they would get stuck on my mouse pad. But I also didn't like wearing short sleeve because some days it just didn't feel right on the mouse pad and other days it felt fine. It was inconsistent. But that's when I found gamer sleeves. It's exactly what I was looking for. It always feels the same and feels nice moving across my mouse pad, which has led to a lot more consistent aim and mechanics. To anybody that uses their arm while building and editing, I'm telling you, it'll make a difference. You can use the link in the description to go check it out and search Jiven at the top and you'll be able to see my own Jiven sleeves. But without further Further ado, let's hop into sensitivity and settings. First off with sensitivity. This is one of the most important things to get better aim, crosshair placement, and consistent edits and builds. It's so important that you don't have your sensitivity too high or too low. I put my sensitivity on the screen right now. It's a really good medium to low sense. But the sensitivity that you choose should be based on the amount of mouse pad space that you have. Everybody has different sized desks, so if you're taking a really low sense but you have a really small amount of space, that's not gonna work. So here's what I recommend doing to find the perfect sense for your amount of desk space. Hop into creative and move your mouse from one side of the mouse space that you use to the other side of the mouse space that you use. You should only spin about one to two times when you move from one side to the other. So adjust your sensitivity until you're only only spinning about one and a half circles when you move from one side to the other, and from there make minor adjustments until it feels like you're at a comfortable sense that you can get used to. If you're making a big sensitivity change, you have to stick with it. Don't just give up right away because it is a major difference. If you're going from being a really high sense player to a really low sense player, you're going to have to get used to building with your arm rather than with your wrist. Which I'm telling you right now, being an arm player rather than a wrist player is way better. It takes getting used to, but you can do so much more with your entire arm than you could with your wrist. Just an FYI, like 99% of pro players are somewhere around my sensitivity. So if yours was way higher, you definitely need to lower that bad boy. Now let's move on to your keybinds. My keybinds are really weird. People ask me for mine all the time, but I'm telling you, don't copy them. My settings are not good simply for the fact that I have way too many build and edit binds on one finger. The reason is, is because I have a bad pinky and bad ring finger, and I don't like putting build binds on them because it hurts. The key to having good key binds is spreading out your build and edit keys across different fingers so that you can hit them really fast. If you have too much on one finger, it's gonna overload that finger and you're gonna be struggling to get faster with building and editing. So on the screen right now are the most important key binds. Make sure all of these key binds are in a really easy to hit place on your keyboard. That means make sure they're really close to your movement binds so you have no problem hitting them. Me personally, I like having the shotgun bind on my mouse so that I always have my thumb on it and anytime I need to pull out my shotgun, I can just quickly hit it. But yeah, the key to having good settings is having these all be easy to hit. The other thing is your index finger is like the most powerful, strongest finger, so you can put a bit more key binds on that finger. The rest of the key binds can be spread out really anywhere on the keyboard. These are the medium important key binds and then these are are the really, really not important ones. Distribute those binds however you want. Try to get the medium ones, medium close to your movement binds, and the not important ones can be the farthest away. And that's how you make the perfect settings. Now, what do I recommend to absolute beginners on keyboard and mouse? Maybe you've been on keyboard and mouse for a while and you're just trying to take it to the next level competitively, or you're on brand new binds, or you're just switching over from controller. Here's what I recommend. There's two things that I recommend you do for literally a couple weeks, maybe even a month. The first one, don't hate me, I'm recommending you another video. I linked in the description my beginner build guide where I go over every single move you need to know. If you're trying to get better at keyboard and mouse and you don't know all of these moves, then you 100% should go through that video, and I promise by the end of it, you'll be a little bit better. Master them until you can do them comfortably every single time, no mistakes, because that's when you know you have it down. But it's one thing to do it not under pressure. The next step 
is doing it in 1v1s. I wouldn't recommend just hopping straight into Arena and expecting all those skills to transfer over. Obviously, you can play Arena if you want, but I'm just saying doing 1v1s is going to be a lot better practice, especially early on. 1v1s is never-ending fighting practice versus Arena. You have to find players and you have to run around the map. So 1v1s is always going to be the faster way to get better mechanically, and it's the best way to start applying those build moves into actual fights and getting it down under pressure. So the two steps are learn the build guide and practice 1v1s. Do that for a while, and I promise you're going to get better so fast. Now, if you're beating everybody in 1v1, Ones, that's when you want to start picking up the pace and 1v1ing people that are better. You can find people like that in scrim discords, just go to general chat or looking for players and you can find people there. Now once you finally feel comfortable on keyboard and mouse, you know, you got through that build guide and you've been starting to win some 1v1s, the way to steadily increase your skill all the way to a pro level, you'll start winning more in arena, hitting better clips, getting more confident, performing better in tourneys, all that stuff. The way you do that is by having a really good routine. I made a routine routine video recently and this routine is going to be really similar but there's a few additional things I added. The first step to my routine is always working on my aim. No matter how good your aim gets, training it is always going to be helpful. It also helps improve your mouse control which directly correlates to improved editing speed, building, everything. That's why I always practice my aim. So here's what I do. I usually try to run Kovacs every single day. I do NPEN's routine. The code is down in the description but let me show you how to apply the code. People kept on asking. All you got to do is go down to the bottom left here and type in the share code. Don't go up to playlist, go to the share code section and copy paste that code. So I try to run Kovacs for 30 minutes to an hour. Make sure you run those drills like four to five times. Don't give up after one or two tries and always make sure you're working on the ones that you're the weakest at. And last thing, make sure you're getting an equal amount of flick training and tracking practice. Don't only run tracking, make sure you're getting a balance between the two. After I run Kovacs, I usually try to run a Fortnite aim trainer as well, whether it be Raiders solo aim trainer or 1v1 aim duels or even just the headshot only practice map. I try to do any of these for literally only 15 minutes or so. I know you all have different time schedules. I usually only practice my mechanics, my aim and all that for like an hour to an hour and a half max. After aim training, there's one more thing that I do to improve my mechanics. And that is doing some kind of building and editing practice. In my last warm up video, I said that I always do Raiders mechanical practice map. And yeah, that's probably the best one to run, but it's important to add variety as well. You don't want to do the same one every day because you're just going to be able to sleepwalk through it. So I put a couple different maps in the description. The best ones are Raiders mechanical map, Tito's practice map, and just free building. Free building is always a good way to practice your building and editing. That is my mechanical routine. And if you run that every single day and stay motivated with it, you are going to see steady improvements. But the big thing is, yeah, if you practice those every single day, it will make you better. But the way to get better the fastest is make sure that you're always putting pushing yourself in those drills. If you just force yourself to do it someday and you're doing it with low energy and you're just going through it, kind of sleepwalking, you're not going to get better. So if there's ever a day where you don't feel like you have the energy to do it, then don't do it that day. Come back the next day and make sure you put all of your energy into these drills, into the Kovacs, and try to do it faster than the day before. The whole entire goal of doing all this is to get more consistent, but also faster at the same time. If you look at a pro player's gameplay and then compare it to your own, you're probably going to notice they're faster and more consistent. They're hitting more edits at a faster rate. The only way to get to that level is to push yourself in this warm up every single day. I'm telling you, if you feel tired and demotivated while playing Fortnite or doing your warm up routine, then that probably means you need to take a break from Fortnite entirely. Now, last thing, you know, after doing that warm up routine, I always hop into either arena, scrims, or 1v1s or 2v2s. The whole routine that I had just mentioned, that's my mechanical routine, and I do try to do that at one point in the day. A whole nother part of the day is running arena, scrims, and 1v1s. Primarily scrims, though, because that's the key to learning the meta and learning how to play in an actual tournament. But yeah, I hope this gave you guys some direction on how to improve on keyboard and mouse. Everything I said in this video is what I do myself to get better. So if you've been following the tournaments wondering how I improved, this video is how I did it. I've got some crazy content coming this season, and I mean that, so stay tuned. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.